Hey guys, it's Di, and I wanted to do a vlog today about Disney, actually specifically about Disney World. Um, I come from a huge Disney crazed family, and growing up, we went to Disney World a few times a year. I remember going there for Christmas, for spring break or Easter break, and then sometimes even going back in the summer. So growing up, Disney is a big part of my childhood memories, and we also went to a number of the parks, and Disney World was the main place that we always visited and then the parks that were there whenever I was growing up were Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and MGM Studios. Since I've been a little bit older they've added Animal Kingdom and I don't have a lot of experience with that park in particular but especially like Magic Kingdom it's one of my favorite parks and I just love going there. So last year I did a blog post on my blog Mom's Got a Brand New Bag and I did it in March of 2011 and it was the first trip that we were going to take Isabella to Disney World. And I was very excited, but I was also very nervous because it was the first time I was going to Disney World without being the child, I guess. It was the first time I was taking a child with me. So I wanted to put my notes and my thoughts together as much as possible when I was packing. And I wanted to try to make a plan to make it through the trip and try to make it as seamless as possible. And now looking back on it, it went great. It was a wonderful trip. She did really, really well. And um, we had a great time. We're planning on going back to Disney World. And hopefully it will be in December of 2012. I had planned to go back in November of 2011. But when I was planning that trip, I found out I was pregnant and due in November of 2011. So that didn't really come, uh, that didn't really turn out to work. So we went ahead and skipped that trip and then I wanted to get Natalie a little bit older. And I actually made the decision to go ahead and wait since we had the two girls until Natalie was a year old so we wouldn't have to bring all the bottle supplies with us. So with one child it wasn't um, that terrible. They let you bring the bottles through security. They just test the water, juice, whatever you're bringing with you. They did at the time that uh, we flew and then also as far as I know they still let you do that now. And so traveling with bottles wasn't exactly too horrible. I just thought since we're going to have the two girls with us now and so twice as much stuff, I would go ahead and try to plan our trip to when I knew Natalie would probably wean off bottles at that point. So I made a list before we were leaving on our trip in 2011 and I wanted to go ahead and go over some tips for bringing small children to Disney World. And I would highly suggest going to Magic Kingdom. I think that of all the parks, Magic Kingdom is the most child-friendly park, and specifically like baby-friendly park. So keeping in mind that I have a toddler and an infant, so obviously Natalie will be about a year old. She won't get as much out of it as Isabella will, but Isabella will be two and a half years old for this trip coming up, and I really want to go to the park that will get the most bang for our buck, basically. And I think that that park is Magic Kingdom. There's so much for them to do there and so much for them to see. It's really geared for children of all ages, even older ones like myself. And I, um, I really love spending the day there. So I had tips and tricks, and some of these are for adults going through the parks, and some of these are for people with kids going through the parks. But what I wanted to talk about in my video is specifically when you have kids with you. And one of the things that I mentioned in my blog post from last year is a lot of people when they go around the park, so if you think about going around um, Magic Kingdom, people will a lot of times go around the park clockwise. So one of the tips that you see a lot of times is go around the park counterclockwise because you'll be going opposite the traffic. But I actually took that a step further in my blog post and I did this when we went on our trip and I would absolutely recommend it. If you have small children with you, so I would say under the age of four or five, you basically, when you get to Magic Kingdom, you want to go directly through the park and you want to go straight to the back and go to Fantasyland. Fantasyland is where all of the things for small children are really... Um, the 
really geared towards them and it's the best place to start. When we, okay, sorry, my phone rang. Anyways, whenever we met in 2011, Mickey's Toontown was closed and it was being revamped and that's now back open. And it's a totally new area. That area is also geared towards young children and it is right next to Fantasyland. So I would head directly straight through the park to Fantasyland and then work your way around um, whichever direction that you really prefer, but if you start at Fantasyland, you could work your, your way around clockwise at that point and be kind of in front of the traffic. Another thing that I mentioned in my blog post is that the obvious things that you want to do, like have the diaper bag stocked full, make sure to bring extra snacks. Obviously food and amusement parks is going to be a little bit pricey. And then um, cupcake. I call her cupcake on my blog, so if you, if you hear me say cupcake, that's why. And obviously Bella was under a year old when we traveled there last time. She was nine months old, so she was just starting table food. And so I wanted to make sure I had a lot of different snacks with me so that I knew she would have things that she would eat because I didn't want to get in the park and then all the options that we tried to give her she would not eat. That was like one of my biggest fears, but that went fine. I had lots of extra snacks and she was willing to try all the table food that we gave her. And then another big tip that I would give you for traveling with kids is the strollers that you can rent in the parks. A lot of people will say go there and rent a stroller. If at all possible, I would suggest from my personal point of view to bring your own stroller that reclines with you. The strollers that are in the parks do not recline. So if you have a child that will nap on the go, I would bring your own stroller with you if at all possible because that way they can take a nap in the stroller and you can keep seeing things in the park and then you're still there when they wake up from their nap so they're ready to go. You can give them Another tip that I had about going through amusement parks is know where your stopping points are. So if, for instance, if it's a really hot day, which a lot of times in Florida it'll be pretty warm, know where the spots are that have bathrooms and then also inside air conditioned places. So for Magic Kingdom what you can do is take out the map right when you get there and find the shops and restaurants restaurants that will be air conditioned. And a lot of places, um, a lot of the stores in the individual areas will be air conditioned. So One thing that I would say if you do not have small children with you, which if you're watching this video you probably will, but one thing that I will say is that if you do not have small children with you, remember that people that have children with them typically enter the park early and leave the park early. So one thing that I always did when I went as an adult and we were by ourselves, we were adults with no children with us, is that we went into the park pretty much late morning and we stayed until close. And then that way we were on a different rotation from the rest of the traffic going around the park and you really do hit things at different times a day. Another thing that I would suggest for anyone traveling there is check out the fast passes and pick out which things you would like a fast pass for at the beginning of the day because it's really important if you can only get so many fast passes to go get those as soon as you get there and then go do the rest of your items. So for us whenever we had the small children with us we weren't as concerned about doing the fast pass items but if you are in a large group of adults and you want to leave your kids um, with another adult, then you could go get a fast pass. The other thing that I wanted to show, and my dad just brought me this from Orlando for the girls when they get older. I thought that this was really cool. It's um, Burn Bomb Guides, and it's Walt Disney World for kids. And this is actually if you have an older child that's probably like uh, lower grade school age and you're going to Disney World, it has separate things um, for each of the parks and it kind of just gets them really excited and ramped up about their trip but it also lets them know what to expect. So for example, and this one's just slightly outdated, but for example there is um, a section on Magic Kingdom and it has a map of the park so they can start thinking about their trip beforehand and start planning where they definitely want to go to throughout the day. And then there's also sections in there for Epcot and there is a section in there for, let me find it, Disney's Hollywood Studios which is what MGM is called now. And then there's also a section in there for Animal Kingdom and it's got the map. And then there is everything else in the world, which I thought was cute. There's lots of other things to do there. There's the water parks, 
all the hotels and restaurants. One thing I would say is that definitely look into downtown Disney while you're there. I love downtown Disney. We've been going there since I was a young child and it has grown a lot but some of the core parts still remain the same. It is free to park there and there's also transportation from the rest of the property to get to downtown Disney. And it's just a nice little shopping and eating area. If you're leaving one of the parks early for the evening or you've come in from your flight for the day and you just wanted to do something for that evening before going to the park the next day, it's a great place to stop and eat and just sit on the lake, stop in some stores, and it has a really, really nice atmosphere. The other thing I would say is that if you're looking for souvenirs, go to Downtown Disney and get them. That way you don't have to carry around the park the whole day. Most items that are in the parks you can find at Downtown Disney, but if you're in a store at one of the amusement parks, what you can do is have them call Downtown Disney and see if the item is available for you and they can either hold it for you or if you are staying on property, you can buy that item in the store in the amusement park or Downtown Disney and have it shipped back to your hotel room. So that's a really nice service as well. So hopefully this has been helpful and I will update with more Disney videos as we start to plan our trip and then also hopefully have some Disney vlogs as well. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.